Well, hello. How is everyone doing? It's about three o'clock on Wednesday afternoon. I know we normally do these a little bit later at 5 p.m., but I have been traveling a lot recently and haven't been able to do one. And I didn't want to go another week without being able to, to do one of our lives. So I decided to start early instead of just not doing one this week. So we're going to be doing some dream interpretation here in just a, a few minutes. So as you're hopping on, let us know where you're coming from. We're, we're going to get started here in a couple minutes. I'll let you know when so that you know when to put in your dreams. We'll see how many of the dreams we can get to and where we end up. So it's been a lot of fun the last couple of weeks, been traveling, been doing some ministry, seeing some astounding stuff. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Kerrville, which is the hill country of Texas. It's about an hour west of San Antonio. And we were doing a business uh, Kingdom Business Conference at a church called Cross Kingdom, and it was amazing. We we had so much fun. I was with my friend Ken Fish. Um, we've done some stuff. Actually, I just did a podcast with him the other day. It's going to be coming out on his God is Not a Theory podcast uh, here before too terribly long. So that was exciting with my friend Brian Barnett from Barnett Signs and Holly Beatonbow from Beatonbow Homes and talking about how to bring the kingdom of God into our business. So that was, it was really, really good. And we got recordings from that event. So the messages that I spoke, we're going to be putting up onto our YouTube channel over the next few weeks. So sometime before the end of the year, probably uh, before a month is up, we'll, we'll at least have the first one up. You'll start seeing those. So keep an eye out. That's going to be a lot of fun. Let's see. We've got people coming in from all over the place. We've got Michigan, Maryland, Seattle, California, a couple people from California, India. We've got New York City. Welcome. Glad to have you. Um, Lubbock, Berta, great to see you. Orlando, Florida. Let's see. India. Amazing. Appleton, Wisconsin. Beautiful. Lakeland, Florida. It's an hour earlier for us, 10 p.m. in Norway. So wonderful. Well, uh, me and Donna actually are doing very well, Lauren. Thank you for, for asking. Doing really good. Glad that we were able to, to get to a time that's a little bit better for you. So 10 p.m. is definitely better than midnight for sure. So we got 9 a.m. in New Zealand. That's nice and early. And we got Trinidad and Tobago. Welcome, welcome. Well, let us jump in. We've got a lot. Romania. Very cool. That was my, my wife's first missions trip was to Romania a few a number of years ago. This is about, about 15 years ago, I think. She got to go there and, and do some stuff. So that that's really, really fun. Well, we, we've got a couple things going on, and we're, we're going to get right into some dream interpretation. Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit more about this as we go through, but one of the things that's going to be really helpful, if you're hoping to learn more about how to interpret dreams, maybe you've taken our courses and you want to learn more, we have a dream internship that's going to be happening here in about two weeks here in the streams offices. I'm going to tell you more about it in a little bit, but I want to make sure that I mention it in case I get too busy interpreting dreams and forget uh, to make sure that you look that up if you're interested. I'll, I'll share some more about it a little bit later, but let, let's get to a couple of these dreams. So White Swan, you said, I saw a priest dressed in full garment holding incense with coals please explain, coming down my hallway. So the, the concept of the incense with the coals, uh, being a, a priest, is the idea of intercession or prayer. We, we get this from the tabernacle of Moses. We get this from the book of Revelation, where it clearly says that those bowls that were being filled the, with incense, the incense was the prayers of the saints. And so this is an invitation for you to step into the, the priestly 
role of intercession, prayer, praying for God's will to come in different situations as God shows you. And so you, you've been going through a, a season of transition. And part of that transition is transitioning how you're operating in your spiritual gifting. And so there's going to be an increase in the, the potential for intercession. And if you press into it, you're going to see some really fun things happening as you do that. Let's see. Tyler, I just saw that. Tyler, it has been a very long time. I hope you are doing well. Great to hear from you, my friend. That's amazing. I was thinking about you a, a couple couple weeks ago, a month ago, uh, a little bit ago. I was, I was thinking about you, just wondering how you guys were doing. Um, yeah, so hope you're doing well. Amazing. Let's see, Jane. Jane, this is what you put in. I ran away after kicking someone out of a public pool building in Jesus' name. Arrived at a crossroad. Both led to blue skies. Path on left was arcade and path on right was paved road lined with trees. So you kick someone out of a public pool building. So the, the idea of a pool is a spiritual community. And the, this is, um, you know, kicking someone out in Jesus name, someone that's doing something wrong. And so bringing the authority of Jesus Christ to remove the influence of somebody from a spiritual community. So this, this could be through confrontation. This could be through uh, revealing what's going on, that, that there's been something that you've done that has revealed and exposed uh, something that's not right in a spiritual community, and you've used your authority to, to get rid of it, to deal with that issue. And it's led you to a place of decision, crossroads, where you can go two different ways. And there's two different options. They both lead to blue skies, so they're both good. Um, it's just going to be two different paths to get there. And it, it, in this, you, because they're both leading to blue skies, they're, they, they're both have the same destination, it's not about which one is better. It's just realizing that there's two options. They're both going to have a good result. And so you get to choose what you like. Uh, personally, I, I'm always like when, when I'm given that, like, well, which whichever one you like, like they're both good. I'm, I'm always like, but just tell me which one to take. <laughs> but he doesn't always do that because he wants us to mature and to grow in our understanding and authority. And you've clearly been growing because you actually dealt with something using the authority that God gave you. And he's, he's showing you that he trusts you to make the right decision. Yeah. In the time that you're in, Farini, I just saw saw you're on there. It's so good to see you. Welcome, great. Farini is a, a friend of mine from Hong Kong. She's been in a number of the courses that uh, I've done. Most of the time when I travel to Hong Kong, I get to see her. So, man, I did my heart good seeing you on here. Amazing. Lady M, Lady M, I was training to work at the airport. AA, so American Airlines wanted me to work for them, but I was I was hired at Hawaiian. I was barefoot, but no one cared. My cousin ran into one of the airplane windows. I tried to warn her. So, what would the airline represent? So airports usually talk about destiny or destination. But this seems that there's something more specific. So I'm just trying to uh, ask it while I'm while I'm still talking. I'm interceding in my spirit and just asking the Lord for for clarity. See if I can get something a little bit more detailed on that. Sometimes we do. Sometimes we don't. But you you do have this difference of American Airline is broader, right? It, it's American. It it it, it oh, it's um, getting out of the idea of airline into the idea of American. So America covers all 50 states, but Hawaii is only one state, right? America is a broader context. Hawaii is a lot more specific. And because you're barefoot, the, the whole thing of Hawaiian, which that would, that would fit just kind of the culture, the feel. It's a little bit more relaxed. Hey, we're on island time. That whole 
relax kind of feel, go with the flow, which would be very much a Hawaiian kind of a thing, which is a little bit different than a lot of places in American. So there's something about your destiny that you have the potential to do something that maybe would have a broader impact, but you're actually going to fit better in something that's a little bit more specific. And um, your cousin running into one of the airplane windows. So you're, you're trying to warn somebody uh, of something that they're going to do. So this running into an airplane window, it, it's... You know, obviously the idea of running into a window because you don't see it and someone not recognizing what's in front of them. This is wisdom. This is discernment, being able to share that wisdom and discernment to stop someone. Well, to potentially stop one, to try to stop someone from from harming themselves, from embarrassing themselves. Uh, but the that the warning did not come across. So, um, yeah, you know. Again, it's one of those who we always like when it's a lot more specific and a lot more clear. And sometimes there, there's not exactly the clarity that we want. Uh, give me just a second, because one, one of the things that's helpful, I, I can, to some extent, I can keep my spirit engaged while I'm talking. But sometimes it's just good just to give a little bit of silence and see if the Lord brings something up. So I'm just going to give this one, let this one rest for just a second and see if something else comes up while I'm thinking about it, while I'm praying about it. Yeah, you know, one of the one of the things that stuck out to me just in that little second was the fact that you were training to work. So you, you've been in a season of learning and growing, and that's actually, that's the key that's going to help you recognize specifically what this is talking about. You are in the training process right now uh, for that. And, and you, what you've been trained for, you're now going to have possibilities. There's going to be opportunities that are going to operate. One, one of them is going to be bigger. It's going to be more broad. Uh, and it's not necessarily the right opportunity just because it, it's bigger. American Airlines is a much bigger airline than uh, a Hawaiian Airlines. But that, but there's something that's a little bit more specific to who you are and something that's going to satisfy a part of your heart that needs to be satisfied and allow you to truly be yourself. This idea of being able to go barefoot, barefoot and everybody's like, oh, yeah, it's not a big deal. Um, that, that is key. So hopefully that helps to dial it in just a little bit more. Let's see, Alexandra, I want to say in Tochi, but I'm not sure it's only got one C and I would think two C's would get that kind of the CH sound. So I probably pronounced your last name wrong. I apologize for that. But Alexandra, I was up, saw two women, said my father prepare the way for a long time ago. They're cleaning a big light bulb. At last bulb, somebody told me a dove died there. So no need, so need to wash the bulb with water and blood. All right. Let me just kind of think on that one real quick. So in this dream, there's two women that say that your father has already prepared the way a long time ago, and they're cleaning this big light bulb. And when they get to the last light bulb, somebody says that a dove died there, so it needs to wash the bulb with water and blood. This is talking about your, your journey in faith. So the father is not your earthly father, but your heavenly father. Um, the, the light bulb is talking about revelation, understanding things that you can see, things that have been revealed to you. And the last light bulb where a dove died is that there have been things that have been taught or things that have been revealed that have actually shut down the move of the spirit and they need to be redeemed with water and with blood. So with water and with blood. So this is the, you need to be born um, the, the whole thing of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the, the water and the blood, 
washed forgiveness, the blood of Jesus Christ washing and, and cleansing. So the, there's this water in blood that is a, a true sanctification, bringing it back into God's intention that needs to happen, uh, that it's not just a normal cleansing. It's not just that there's some things that need to be cleaned up or clarified, but it actually needs to be redeemed and forgiven so that there can be truth revealed. That is an interesting dream. Let's see. Jamaira Figuero. Now, I, I have so much fun. I want to take time and figure out everybody's names. I hate when I say names wrong, but it's, you know, not knowing pronunciations. It's so much easier when you can ask somebody, how do you say that? And then copy back what they say. So I had a dream that I was reading a letter written from God in invisible ink. It was written on the back of a white linen coat a prophet from L.A. was wearing. We were in a beautiful forest with tall trees. So here's, here's an interesting thing. One, one of the things that we say often when talking about dreams is that dreams are written in disappearing ink. Uh, because they it's something that gets revealed. But if you don't grab hold of it, it, a lot of times, there's some dreams that stick with you, but a lot of times dreams, they'll just kind of fade away. I, I don't know how many times you've woken up from having had a dream. And you're like, wow, that was amazing. And then, you know, a couple hours later, something happens and you, it reminds you that you had a dream, but you can't even remember the dreams. Like, how did I forget that? I thought that was so profound. I thought that was so important. And, and that just realizing that that is uh, one of the ways that revelation lands, that not all revelation is revelation that's going to sit and it sticks with you forever. So that sometimes there are things that God says that needs to be captured, um, but there and, and there's there's a reason. Like disappearing ink, the idea of disappearing ink is you can write a message that is not easily seen. It's like a, a secret way of getting secret messages. So. There's a secret message. There, there's ways of God speaking that maybe are, are not as profound and clear as what others have heard, but it is real. It's genuine. The, the white linen coat, white linen garments, according to Revelation, is talking about the righteous deeds of the saints. So this is talking about the, this, this prophetic gift that is accompanied by righteous activity. And that is where you're getting an impartation where you're going to start to have your own encounters hearing from God, but it may not be in the way that you, you would think. It's going to be in that disappearing ink and you're going to have to actually grab hold of it and remember it and value it to be able to, to remember the message that's being given. Uh, the the beautiful forest with tall trees is is talking about the the leadership that you're going to be around leaders. So there, this is basically it's a calling dream, letting you know that your prophetic gift is on an increase. That you're going to be having more prophetic activity. You're going to be around other leaders, um, and there's an impartation that you're receiving for the prophetic. That is a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Let's see, Esther. Esther, you wrote this. I'm with a Hindu friend of mine sitting on my bed. Then she looks like a Hindu goddess with eye makeup and a nose ring, and she seems intimidating when looking into her eyes. I see the spirit inside of her. So this is basically the, the gift of distinguishing of spirits happening in a dream. You're, you're recognizing the reality of that influence and uh, learning to be careful with those that, um, you know, th there's a saying that going to bed with someone and there's the, there's kind of the more, um, th there's one aspect of that that's talking about sexual activity. It's not talking about the other is, is just being intimate, opening yourself up to someone. And if you allow yourself to, to be more open, more transparent, more intimate with people, recognizing that there is an influence that they carry. And, and this is, is just letting you know that there is actually spirit behind 
um, that influence and to be careful of how you let that influence you. So it's just showing you that that spirit is actually there, uh, that there actually is an influence there. So that it lets you know now you get to decide, okay, so how, Lord, do I continue to engage with my friend without the spirit that is in her influencing me? I want to influence her. I don't want to be influenced by her. And really trusting Holy Spirit to give you wisdom in the right way of doing that. Because it's not just about pulling back and having nothing to do. Because there, there's there's a time when God will say that. But this is not what the dream says. It's just letting you know that it's there. And you need to be aware of it so that you don't, um, you don't let it have undue influence. There you go. Alinga. Alinga, I was sleeping in my bed. I woke up and saw that my dog had chewed off his front left foot and it was laying beside my nightstands. Both ends were healed up, no blood. His front left foot. Okay, so dog can represent the actual dog, can represent a friend. Chewing the foot off is harming yourself, right? The so this person, it's not you harming yourself because it's your it's your dog. So it's not you, it's about somebody else. Um, that's one of the one of the ways that you recognize. Um, a Jungian interpretation. And, you know, at times we've talked about the difference between a Jungian versus a Christian interpretation because they're not the same thing. Um, you're not going to get to the right interpretation of a God dream using Jungian philosophy. But his understanding is every part of the dream represented an aspect of the dreamer. So um, in Jungian, the, the dog would actually represent a part of the dreamer. But that you, you're not going to be able to use that philosophy to get to any of the interpretations that God gave to any of the dreams in Scripture. So that way of looking at it, and there's a lot of other reasons why it's wrong, but just it, the fact that you can't get to the right interpretation is a good enough reason to realize that it's wrong. But so it's not about you. It's This is about somebody that you're in relationship with, somebody that you you have a friendship with. Um, it doesn't seem like it's actually about your dog. Just, well, and I hate saying that, you know, I, I was going to say, because it just doesn't make sense that this would be your dog. And, and that's true, but that's not a good reason for it not to be the answer because just because it doesn't make sense, doesn't mean it's not what God is saying because he doesn't think like we think. So you've got to be careful with that. And so even when I'm saying that, it's not really the fact that it doesn't make sense. It just doesn't feel right. And so I'm, I'm, you're, you're asking as you're thinking about what the elements might mean. You're asking Holy Spirit and inviting him into the process. And it just doesn't feel right that this is natural. And you've got some clues that it's not about your natural dog. Like if your natural dog had, had chewed off his foot, there would be blood. It, it wouldn't heal up supernaturally. So there has to be some metaphor to this. And so if there's metaphor to that, there's probably metaphor to the rest of it. And so that that those are those are all clues that are pointing us towards there's something else going on here. So that's why we're thinking it's it's not actually about your dog. So this is about someone. Now, why the the front left foot? Um, a lot of times things on the left talks about destiny, where things on the right talks about ability or faith. So that that's that's a principle. Um, left, yeah, so that that starting with that and and foot is, you know, the the front foot, the front paw, there there's a relational aspect. you know, I mean, obviously it's not human, but if you're gonna shake a dog's, paw. They're generally giving you the front paw, not the back paw. Um, they're able to move around on their back haunches, so some dogs at least, and they can be trained to. I think any dog could be trained to just walk on their two back legs. Um, and so there, there's, there's an aspect of it's not essential. It's more of a relational thing. It's more of a capacity, uh, more of an ability to do something. And, and so this, this is talking about a, a friend of yours, somebody that you're in relationship with, 
that has harmed themselves and specifically harmed their ability to do what they were called to do. Harmed their ability to do what they were called to do. It, it's a call for intercession and it doesn't say who it is, which that that's what we really want to know. Well, who is this? You will probably recognize it because you're going to see somebody's done something and, and it's not like it's an open wound where there's blood all over the place. Like it, it's healed up. But there's somebody that you're in relationship with that has, um, through their own decisions, they chewed their own arm off, um, has made it so that they can't walk out what they've been called to walk out. All right. Eastside Doll Cosmetics. I was told in a dream I had the gift of revelation. Then I looked in a mirror and it was a portal. I saw a broken woman with a crown. All right. So what we call calling dream, this recognizing a calling, something that God has put within use, um, this, this specifically gifting that God has given you. So you have the gift of revelation. So in the dream, you're being told that you have the gift of revelation. Uh, so this is this is something that is there. Now you're getting revelation that you have the gift of revelation. So there's already confirmation that you have the gift of revelation, right? Because the dream itself is revelation. So you're getting revelation. Um, looked in a mirror, and the mirror was a portal. A portal is just a, 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 an entrance into another realm. So this whole thing of looking in a mirror, you have the I think it's First Corinthians or Second Corinthians, chapter three, verse eighteen says that. Uh, we were all with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror, the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image. So beholding in a mirror is, is meditating on Jesus. So there's a meditation of Jesus that's opened up spiritual realities. Saw a broken woman with a crown. Now, you didn't say that you saw yourself broken. You saw a broken woman with a crown. And this is probably the church that you're you're recognizing the brokenness of the church and having a crown because the bride of Christ, the bride of a king is a queen. The bride of Christ is the queen. So there's a crown there. So you're seeing the bride of Christ with a crown, but you're seeing the brokenness there. And that uh, implies something. So this is not clear in the dream. Um, but knowing the ways of God and and the sense that I have in my spirit, you're being shown this because you you have a part to play in bringing it healing. That you have a gift of revelation, and that gift of revelation is, is going to increase the more that you meditate on the reality of Christ, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord. And, and, and that's going to open up heavenly realities and you're going to be able to see the brokenness in the body of Christ. And if you see it, usually you see it because God's called you to answer it. And so I, I trust that the Lord's going to start giving you keys to bring healing to the brokenness that you find in the body of Christ. That is a very cool, very fun calling dream. We talk about in the 20 categories of dreams, which we have as a, a book that's written based on John Paul's teaching. We also have in Essentials of Dreams and Visions, where John Paul teaches through the different 20 categories in detail. It's actually where we, we, we pulled to write the book on 20 categories of dreams. Um, but that, that teaching, one of the types of dreams is a calling dream which is a dream that's telling you about things you're going to be doing in the future. So that is fun. Well, let me, I'm going to, I'm going to share just a, a little bit about our dream internship, and then I'm going to interpret a couple more dreams before we wrap up today. So this dream internship that we've got, it's starting October 31st, which is a Monday. Um, it, this is going to be an intensive time, meaning it, it's, it, it's, it's going to be a commitment of time. It's going to require something of you for if you if you're wanting to come, it's only in person. So you'll have to be able to get here to the Dallas Fort Worth area. We're doing it right here at the streams offices. It's going to be Monday all the way through Saturday. 
we're going to spend a week. We, we've got almost a dozen people. We're going to shut it off at 25 people. So we're not going to have any more than 25 registrations because we want to keep it small enough that we're able to spend time with everybody that's coming. Um, I'm going to be spending time with each of the people that come. We've we've got a few other guests that are going to be coming. My friend Heather Sutherland from Dreamhouse is coming. Uh, I, I've got a friend, Ellen Drake, that's going to be here. Uh, I've, I've got a friend, Kathy Gray, who is an amazing dream interpreter that's local to the area. Deborah Alsabrook, who is an Elijah House counselor that she does um, inner healing and deliverance, but she's also a, a dream interpreter, has been interpreting dreams with us for years. Uh, so we're, we're all going to be working together and, and, and providing different aspects of mentoring and dream interpretation. They're each gonna, gonna share just a little bit. We're gonna spend a lot of time interpreting dreams and working through those interpretations. You're gonna get to work with other dream interpreters, have lots of conversations, be able to ask questions, interpret dreams, have somebody that has a lot more experience walk through that same dream that you just interpreted and give you feedback, how you could have done a little bit better, uh, where, you, where you nailed it, where, where you can grow a little bit. And this process is so helpful. I, I was learning, I was with a friend of mine in Scotland a few years ago, and he, he was a pastor of the church I was ministering at, and he wanted to take me fly fishing, and he was teaching me how to, how to cast a, a fly, which is not an easy thing to do. But as, as I was learning, I was just on the side, just practicing before I started putting it into the water, and, and he came by, and he goes, you know, here, let, let me show you something. He goes, you've heard the saying, a practice makes perfect. I'm like, yeah, I've heard it. He goes, it's not true. I'm like, huh? He goes, practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes permanent. You want to make sure while you're practicing, you're practicing the right way. Because if not, you'll actually develop habits that will make it harder for you down the line. So what we want to do is we want to figure out, we want to make sure that the practice that we have is the right practice. And when you have feedback from others that have been down the road and that have experience and fruit from that experience, it, it does something to help you grow as a dream interpreter that nothing else will do. Now, to be able to be a part of the internship, you have to have um, I'm going to put up the information about the internship. The, this is the website you can go to. It'll have all the information so you can look it up. Um, you, you have to have taken the Understanding Dreams and Visions course that John Paul wrote or our Interpreting Dreams and Visions module, which is the, the current module in Streams Academy. So you have to have taken at least those because it's it's not going to be teaching you the basics of dream interpretation. We're expecting you already to know that. This is practice. Once you've learned and you've taken the class, you've got the information, how do you put it into practice? So this is the mentoring time that comes after the, the teaching time. So if you've taken either of those courses and you want to go further, this is going to be really helpful. And if you don't have the time to be here for the whole six days, because I know that's a lot, um, then you could just come just to the Saturday. We do have a dream intensive that is only on that Saturday. It'll be an all day thing. And uh, it, everybody from the internship will be still there for a part of that. But then we'll also have some new people that'll be coming in uh, for the intensive and that will also be available. So either way, you're, you're going to get a lot. But if you can make it for that internship, uh, it is the best way that I know of to take your, your dreaming and your ability to interpret to the next level. Um, we're we're going to be doing prophetic exercises. We're going to be, uh, we're going to be talking through dreams. We're, we're going to be doing some outreach. We're actually going to go out on the streets and interpret some dreams live for people out on the streets. That's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, lots of opportunities for you to grow in that gift. So check it out. Would love to have you join us. And if you're not coming to that, um, well, even if you are coming to that, the other thing, we do have a conference is coming up the first weekend of December. This is our final conference this year on advancing revelation. And I, I've, it's going to be myself, my friend Charity Bowman Webb, who is from Scotland. 
Uh, she heads up Streams Creative House. She's going to be there. And Tony Kim. Uh, Tony Kim is the executive director for uh, HIM, which is the apostolic network that Cheon oversees. Um, he's also just a, a good friend of mine. And he he started this group called Roar that I am a part of. And we have so much fun. We, we've got, uh, uh, man, it's the people that are coming that I know of already. I, I'm just excited. We're, we're going to be basically having a huge family reunion. We're going to have prophetic nights. It's going to be a lot of fun. You know, if you can make it to that, that that's going to be a great time just for encounter. Okay, let's get to a couple more dreams. Patricia, Patricia Hines, here was the dream that you put in. I'm searching my grandparents' house for my grandfather's hidden wealth. There's a grandfather clock. I split apart and find certificates. I'm then called Indiana Jones. Okay, so this this is a lot of fun. You, you've got some some things in there that uh, just uh, you'll see a couple times in dream interpretation that are that are a lot of fun. The the whole thing of the grandparents' house and the grandparents' hidden wealth. This is talking about something that's in your bloodline. So this is a, a spiritual inheritance, that there is some beautiful things that are there in your spiritual inheritance, and it's going to take uh, an adventure to search them out. So you're, you're going to find them, you're going to discover them, but it, it, it's, it's like that Indiana Jones adventurous spirit searching out things that have been forgotten and, and, and things that other people have overlooked, but finding something valuable where other people have not been able to find it, that's going to be you. You're going to be able to find it. You're going to be able to discover it because there are riches in your spiritual inheritance for you to discover. That is, that that's just, that's fun. Okay. Rebecca, Rebecca Bradley, I saw through a large picture window, a herd of moose with giant ears and lights hanging from their ears. They walk through the woods at night. The forest glowed soft blue. Well, that is an interesting dream. How fun is that? That just sounds beautiful. Well, moose. So moose can mean, I mean, there are a variety of different things. They they tend to be a little bit more aggressive than some of the other um, some of the other type of, of animals like that than elk or deer. Uh, moose tend to be a little bit more aggressive, but they're also a little bit more rare. Um, they're huge. They've got a huge impact, and those antlers that that go out really big that um, they, they can represent just the ability to, to receive information. Uh, I know in the natural, they don't receive information, but it can recognize that. I, I remember when I moved up to New Hampshire, John Paul talking about uh, moose rep representing a move of God, um, that he'd had an encounter where uh, moose represented a move of God. And I actually had a pretty wild encounter one time where a moose represented a move of God and what God was trying to do in the region. Um, so there, there's something that God wants to release that is a little bit more rare than some of the other things. And, and this whole thing of walking through the woods at night, the lights is talking about revelation, the forest glowing soft blue, soft blue can re also talk about revelation. So there's some things where, where there's been some darkness, where there's been a lack of revelation, but God is bringing a new move of something that's going to release revelation and start to illuminate that which has been hidden. That is, that's neat. Let's see. Vereshua. Vereshua, I saw a really flashy bathroom. I was told to get the matching socks for my shoes to make them easier to walk in. My shoes did not give my feet much support. All right, so 
bathroom usually talks about inner healing, dealing with um, dealing with things that in our lives. So getting getting some toxins out, um, cleansing our hands. But it, it, there's some type of inner healing that some type of process that we're going through matching socks for your shoes that you, you've been walking in something and it hasn't been as comfortable and you're you're being told you're you're being given the ability to make it a little bit more comfortable because they're 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 not easy to walk in your shoes are not giving your feet much support so you you haven't had as much support in trying to walk out your destiny and it's actually created some issues that need to be healing healed and God is going to bring the healing but he's also going to bring comfort uh, to what you've been called to walk out. That is, that's cool. Okay. Let's grab our last dream. This is Mary Connor. Mary, this is what you wrote. I was in a huge, very dark, huge room in the corner. I saw a large snake, snake that opened its mouth and there a giant ruby in his mouth. I reached out to take the ruby and his mouth clamped down on my hand. So here, here's something, ruby in Proverbs, it talks about how wisdom is more precious than rubies. And it's interesting that it uses rubies. The rubies are a red jewel and red also talks about wisdom. The blood of Jesus is the wisdom of God. So this, this idea of, of something that looks wise, but it's actually in the mouth of deception, uh, in the mouth of something that's not true, not right. And so there has been, you know, a dark, dark, huge room. So this is not where there's the light of revelation. This is not where there's God, but you've been in an environment, in an environment where deception has been presenting wisdom and making it look precious, but it's actually a trap. Deception has been presenting false wisdom as precious, but it's actually a trap. And you're being given discernment to recognize that, that what you thought was actually valuable, you thought that it was wisdom, that actually is deception, and it's not what you thought it was. And so th this is letting you know, this is what the enemy has planned for you. So now you know how to pray. Pray that that, that does not happen. Warn yourself. Don't let yourself fall for the trap of something that looks like wisdom, but actually is not in a healthy environment. Pay attention to the, the signs, the clues that you have, because God's going to warn you so that you don't fall into this trap. And that, yeah, it's so helpful when we get dreams like that so that we can avoid those things. Um, yeah. Well, let, I'm going to answer this quick question. This is not completely a dream, but we'll, we'll see where we go. Joe Mack is asking, what do apes represent in a dream? Um, well, thinking about the, the, the thing with dream elements is that context really helps you a lot. It's the reason why I wrote this, the dream element book. That There it is. <laughs> that, that's the, the dream elements book that we wrote where we go through the different dream elements. But we actually take a chapter about each one because we want to figure out, like, what does it mean in the context of the dream? Because it's going to change depending on the context. What are they doing? What's happening with them? Um, are they pretending to be something that they're not? Are they fighting? Are they playing? Are they eating? Are they all of those questions that are going to help you to understand specifically what they mean? But it, it's something that is extremely strong, right? The, there, there's, there's, there's a relational aspect. You know, apes are, are very relational, family relational. But they're they're very much um, that strength and that use of strength to to hold dominance and to prove dominance and to maintain dominance. Um, that there's there's that aspect of it. Um, you know, there, there's not the the level of um, spiritual sensitivity that a human has because they they have strength and there's levels of intelligence but they don't have a spirit 
So there, there is, there, there's, there's that lack of humanity um, that is, is tied into that. So all, all of those are questions you start to ask. So they, they might represent um, people that are using their strength to dominate. Again, the context is going to tell. Um, or that uh, are not walking in true wisdom, but are walking in earthly wisdom. Um, lack of intelligence. There's, there's a couple different things. Without the context of the dream, it's really hard just to pull an element uh, out of context because it can mean so many different things in different dreams and context really helps you. It's one of the reasons why so many dream dictionaries are actually really unhelpful because they just tell you, well, this means this. And well, maybe it means that in some dreams, but not in other dreams. And then not in this context or not in that context. So being very, very careful with what we call interpretive legalism. This always means that you want to avoid that as much as you can. And the key to interpreting dreams is maintaining relationship with Jesus because he's the one that has the answer. If he gave the dream, he understands the dream. And even if he didn't give the dream, he still understands the dream in how to respond rightly. Even if it was the enemy that gave the dream or, or that's, if it's a lying dream or a false dream, it's another one of the categories of dreams, um, or even a warning dream the or a dark dream, like there, there's different types of dreams that that don't come from God, but God still understands exactly what they mean and how to think about them. So the, the, the key is really maintaining that place of trusting in God to show you what a dream means and, and asking him. So you start with those ideas, like I gave you a couple ideas what apes might represent. And then start praying and asking God, well, what about in this dream? Well, why were they doing this? Well, why weren't they doing this? And asking those kinds of questions will help you to dial in exactly what it means. Well, guys, it's been great being back, doing some dream interpretation again. Uh, like I said, it's been a real busy season ministering. I, I'm getting ready to go. I'm actually flying out early in the morning. I am heading up to Minnesota. If you're in the Minneapolis, St. Paul area, uh, check out Dare to Believe. I'm going to be with Dare to Believe over the weekend. My friend, Christy Grainer, who's one of our streams teachers, she's got a great ministry school up there. I'm going to be ministering with her. Um, I'll be at a church there on Sunday. All of it is on our calendar. So if you go to streamsministries.com, and look on the calendar, you'll see the information, you'll be able to, to do this. So if you're in the area and you want to come and um, be a part of one of the meetings, we would love to have you. Make sure you come up and say hi and let me know that you've been watching uh, on social media. I'd love to get to, to meet you. And hopefully some of you will be with us in a couple of weeks when we do our dream internship. Make sure you check that out. And our goal is to be back next week uh, I'll be Wednesday night and we'll be back at our normal time. So about 5 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time is when we're planning. So we will see you guys next week. Have an astounding day. The Lord bless you.